I'm on the Asus ROG Zenith 2 Extreme Alpha motherboard with BetaBIOS 0081 and an engineering sample of the Ryzen Threadripper 5990X 64 core processor. I also have 32GB of DDR4 memory installed. The default CPU frequency is 2500 MHz, but we'll quickly sort that out to get more performance. I already made a profile for AI benchmark, so let's load that up first. Then I'll show you the relevant settings before going to the benchmark. Firstly, I use DOCP to load the XMP settings from the memory sticks. This kit is rated at DDR4 4266CL19, but unfortunately that's too high of a frequency for the CPU. Usually I stick to DDR4 3600. I'm also running the fabric in synchronous mode with the memory. So that's 1800 MHz for DDR4 3600 memory. Then the bulk of the tuning is done in the CPU core ratio submenu. Here we get access to the core VID and the CCX ratios. Ryzen CPUs have a single voltage rail for all CPU cores called VDDCR CPU. We can set the target voltage for that voltage rail using the core VID setting. In this case, I've set it to 1.275 volt. Now I know what you're thinking, that's pretty high for 64 cores. But as you'll see later on, it's staying within the thermal limits for this benchmark. Then let's set the CPU ratios. Ryzen CPUs offer separate PLLs for every CCX. CCX stands for Core Complex and is essentially a group of CPU cores with their L1 and L2 cache and a shared L3 cache. For Zen 3, one CCX consists of 8 cores, whereas on Zen 2, one CCX had only 4 cores. The CCXs are integrated on the CCD or Core Complex die. That's basically the CPU die. On Zen 3, one CCD fits one CCX, whereas on Zen 2, one CCD had two CCXs. Ironically, Zen 2 Threadripper had more fine tuning options as there were double the amount of CCXs. For Zen 3 Threadripper, we only have eight CCXs to tune. To figure out the appropriate CCX ratio, I simply started from a 40x baseline for each CCX, then increased the ratios one by one to the highest stable setting. As you can see, there is a bit of a spread with the worst CCX clocking in at 4175 MHz and the best CCX clocking in at 4375 MHz. Then the last setting you want to ensure is set correctly is SMT mode. Make sure it's disabled so that only 64 threads are active. AI benchmark doesn't scale with many threads, so you want the threads to run on the real cores. Then hit F10 and save the settings. So now let's load up the operating system and benchmark. I'm running Windows 11 Enterprise as it may be slightly better at managing as many threads as the Ryzen Threadripper has. Since it's a pretty long benchmark, I'll keep hardware info running alongside. That will give you a better view on how system temperatures and voltages are during the run. AI Benchmark is an open source Python library, so I'm using an Anaconda environment to run it. I also enabled the One API Deep Neural Network Library, one DNN performance library. It pretty much doubles the performance. Then I make sure the benchmark runs on the CPU cores only. Now I'll leave you to enjoy the benchmark and hardware info. The total runtime is about 14 to 15 minutes. You'll notice that the AI benchmark consists of a large set of training and inference benchmarks, each differing in how they load the CPU. Overall, AI Benchmark is probably the toughest benchmark when it comes to transient loads, as it's a mix of rapid single-threaded and heavy multi-threaded workloads. For those who won't make it until the end, you'll find that the resulting benchmark score is 6,373 points and the maximum CPU temperature is around 90 degrees Celsius. Illustrating how rough this benchmark is on transient loads, the maximum VRM temperature is 83 degrees Celsius. That's pretty high considering it's a water-cooled VRM. Maybe a quick note on the cooling system. I'm using the EK Quantum Momentum Monoblock, a Coolstream PE360 radiator, and an EK Quantum Surface P480M radiator. It's definitely overkill for a quick benchmark like this, but much needed when running sustained workloads. For more information on that, I suggest you check out Scatterventure number 43.
That's it, I thank you for watching and the Patreons for the support and see you next time.